Hi guys, and welcome to my DIY channel. My name is Anneli, and let's get right into today's video. So this is a bag that you can get from the Dollar Tree, and I'm gonna be using this as a background to this sign that we're gonna be making for spring. So I went ahead and I just used some wood glue and glued it onto some foam core board from the Dollar Tree. And once that was glued in place, I went ahead and I cut out the foam core. Yes, this measures 14 inches by 16.5 inches. Good thing I put that up there because I never remember what these measure. And then I just got the foam core cut down to size and then I put some Mod Podge on the top to seal it. Using some scrap wood, I went ahead and I got it sanded and cut down. This, I am just cutting a little groove into it with my table saw. We are staining it in the color Jacobian. And then using this little hello sign that I got from the Dollar Tree, I went ahead and I painted this, this pink color to match the sign. And I also painted the top of it. This was the hardest thing I have ever painted in my life. This had me questioning everything. Seriously, it was like, I, I was questioning everything. But in the end, it ended up working out okay, and it was worth it. I'm very glad that I did it because it looks so much better. And then I peeled off the gold, and I wanted that white to stand out a little bit more, so I painted the letters white. I stapled my frame together and then measured out where this hello sign could go evenly so that I could put it evenly on my sign. And then using a stencil from the Dollar Tree, I traced out the word spring and colored it over with a marker, a paint marker from Arteza. And then we glued on the hello sign. And then right here in these grooves that I cut out, I went ahead and put some glue down and here it is. We glued it in and it is just a cute framed sign for spring. This I got from Hobby Lobby. This was just over in their discount section. So I went ahead and took this apart, sanded and painted it. This is some scrapbook paper that you can get from Joann's. And I wanted this to be on the outside. So using some wood glue, I always glue my paper down with wood glue because I find that it wrinkles less. I glued this down and then it put I put a layer of Mod Podge on the top. And then some wood glue and hot glue glued this back into place for me. And then a vinyl decal went right here in the middle. And then a little bit of distressing on the frame and this sign was done. Just a cute spring farmhouse hello sign to match my lemon theme that you will see a little later. Using this paint stick, I ended up cutting these into these pieces of wood right here. These are about seven inches long each and I went ahead and I cut them down to with like 30 degree angles. And this little trick I learned on another YouTube video. So you line them up where you want them to go, put this painter's tape on them, and then put some wood glue in between. And I did a little bit of hot glue because I wanted them to secure and hold well while the wood glue dried. But then you just roll this up just like this, and this forms a perfect hexagon shelf. It's only perfect if you're cuts are good though because I botched several pieces of wood trying to get the angles cut right. I let this dry overnight and then removed the tape and stained this using the color Jacobian. Using this scrap piece of wood I wanted to kind of box this in to make a little planter. So I cut these down to size with my chop saw using this piece of paper, this scrapbook paper that I got from Joann's. I glued this down with some wood glue. And this is, of course, going to be the back part of the upper top of my little planter box here. So then using the other two pieces, I glued these on the front. So there you go. Now you can see that it's the back. That's the part that you're gonna see. So we stained the other two pieces so they matched, and then we stapled them to the back and to the front to form this little planter box. And then, okay, I guess I'm not gonna show you the reveal just yet. Here is another hexagon shelf that I did. So this is, I accidentally cut the wood the wrong way. So I decided to make this a frame anyway, and this piece was just a little bit too big. So I measured this out and cut this down to size and then put this in. So even though it's a little bit smaller than the rest, I used the bow to cover that part up so you really can't tell. And then we're gonna staple some chicken wire to the back of this once the glue is dry. Cut this off and now we have a cute little hexagon frame. Um, I don't know where I got this ribbon. I got it years ago, possibly at Hobby Lobby. 
And so I just cut a little bow and then I put another bow on top of it to layer it. And then some of this really pretty lavender that I got from the Dollar Tree. Um, I tied this together in a little bouquet and then tied that onto the back. So the flowers are on the front, but I made sure to tie it through so that it was on the back. And then I just put the bow on there. And here we have a an, another hexagon frame. So this was basically to show you how to do two hexagon shaped frames, but different ways, like a flat frame and then a more um, 3D, is that a good way? And then I did embellish that other one you can see on the right, right there, I did embellish that with some twine and a little twine bow. And then I just added some greenery and there they are. I stained the right side with the color Jacobian and then the left is some wax, wax stain in that color. <laughs> okay, using this piece of paper that I got from Joann's, I am cutting these down to size right here so that you can see. And then these I picked up from Walmart. I love using these. If you guys remember my Christmas decor, I use these a ton for Christmas. So this is some scrap wood that I had left over. I glued this on from the scrapbook paper. So I glued that on and then I distressed the edges of this frame after staining it. I'm definitely skipping some steps, you guys, I'm sorry, but at least you can see what I'm doing. So I stained it first, of course, and then we went ahead and distressed it with some white, glued down some more scrapbook paper that I got from Joann's, and then I glued this little piece of wood right into the middle of it, and then just gave it a little jute bow for some embellishment, and this tiny little spring sign was done. These are so fun for little shelf accents or even to use on like a tiered tray. Using the sign that you can get from the Dollar Tree, I went ahead and, oh, and this paint stick and these right here, I had these left over from another project that I made and so they were technically scrap wood. So I went ahead and I got this painted so that I could use this as the back of my sign. This is just Waverly chalk paint. I measured these out and cut these down. I believe these measure seven inches. We are staining them in the color Jacobian. And once those were dry, I lined them up. Oh, and I also stained the outer edge pieces that we are using for my frame that you saw right there. This is a very fast video. Um, if you guys want the full tutorial, I will have the videos um, on my channel for you guys to see. I will try to have them linked in the iCards if I can, but this is just a very quick version of how I made these signs here. But I went ahead and I got everything glued together and then using my cutting machine, I just cut out the words, enjoy the little things with um, some white vinyl and then this kind of little floral piece. I went ahead and put that on as well. Stapled the frame together. The frame has some grooves in it so that I could slide the actual um, back part of it down in there and this is how this turned out. I love this little farmhouse sign. This is something that you can use year round and I love the simplicity of the brown, white, the brown with the white, the stain with the white, struggling. Okay, using the sign that you can get from the Dollar Tree, um, we went ahead and broke it down, painted them, and then this crate I got from the Dollar Tree as well. Pretty much everything you're gonna see in the next five projects are from the Dollar Tree, for the most part. Um, this stake is actually not from the Dollar Tree, it's just from scrap wood, but I made sure to top, oh wow, cut the top part of it like a stake. Um, I went ahead and I distressed everything really good after I painted it, and then I used some vinyl to put these words on to each one of these little arrow signs. All of these projects that you are seeing right now are projects that I used when I was in the Creative Champion Contest for the month of March. If you guys haven't had a chance to go check that out, please, I will, um, please be, please go do so. <laughs> I will leave everything linked down below for you guys. But I wanted to make this little bunny crate sign and so I wanted it to stand up so I had to make some stable stabilizers and so I cut out some triangles and glued them on and then I used rocks literally just from my driveway to keep the sign um, weighted down so that it didn't tip over. Put some floral foam in, filled it up, and then some moss on top, and then this little Easter grass. Filled this in, gave it a little haircut so that it was, you were able to still see the sign so that it didn't block the sign, and I put everything in. I made this video really, really quick, you guys, and it is really quick. I can barely keep up. Good thing you guys can see what I'm doing because I'm falling behind. But here it is. This is the um, project that I entered for the second week of the Creative 
Creative Champion Contest. All right, here's this paper again from Joanne's. Joanne is killing it with scrapbook paper right now, you guys. Um, so the rest of these supplies are from the Dollar Tree. So just some popsicle sticks, this little wood sign, and then um, a extra piece of scrap wood from the Dollar Tree. I went ahead and I cut this paper out and then cut it down to size on this little scrap piece of wood right here from an old sign from, it was like a Valentine sign from the Dollar Tree. And then I used some wood glue to put this down and glue on my paper. I love this paper and I love how I can make like these little 3D signs. Um, I went ahead and I got this little bottom sign painted white on the edges and on the top and then of course painted all of the popsicle sticks and this wooden dowel right here all from the Dollar Tree. I distressed them to make sure that I could give them a little bit of dimension and then I glued these all around the base of the sign to make a little white picket fence. And then I painted the inside of it green just a little bit. We are going to be using some moss, but I wanted the green paint to help fill in where the moss really didn't cover. And so I put down a little bit of floral foam because we're making a cute little flower garden. And then I did drill a hole in the middle of that sign so that I could glue the dowel right down into the hole. So just like a countersink hole. And then once that was dry, I filled it up with some floral from the Dollar Tree, embellished it with a bow, and that was it. Okay, this next time we're gonna be making these carrots and so I'm using some jute twine to decorate the carrots with twine. So what I, I went ahead and I just glued jute twine like this. I cut out little strips and just put it right next to each other to bring it all the way down to give this some texture. Once I was done with that, I used my scissors to go around and trim off the edges so that it actually still looked like a carrot. And then um, on the top, I went ahead and I used some green moss to make the tops of our carrots right here. And then I wanted to glue my carrots onto a little sign. So for the very first time ever, I decided to try and paint my very own buffalo check. This was interesting. Um, here's my base coat. I used some Waverly white chalk paint. I put that down first. I let that dry. And then I wanted some small buffalo checks. So I'm using this really skinny tape right here to give me some lines and then I'm just using some very, very light orange paint. It's a bright orange paint. It really didn't necessarily come out looking orange. It kind of looks a little bit yellow when I'm done with it, but it was supposed to be orange. But I did a very faint layer of orange stripes that way. So that is um, horizontal. Those are the horizon, right? And then um, I put them vertical. I hope I'm saying this right, probably not. And then each time I'm darkening my orange just a little bit. It's really just a little bit too though, like you can barely see. And then for the last color, I'm just using the orange paint straight from the bottle. I didn't mix it with anything. So this is my first time, like I said, doing buffalo and buffalo check, and here we go. We are gonna see the reveal for the first time. And I was so excited. And you can see here, if you look really, really closely, it's crooked. All my lines are drunk. So I did end up fixing that. I must have flipped my sign around just the opposite way and put them down because they are crooked. I did end up fixing it so that they actually were straight and it worked out. And then using some wood for the frame on the outside, I went ahead and I just used some wax to paint that and framed it. And then I glued these carrots on and this sign was done. So thankfully, you can't really tell that the buffalo check was super crooked. I was able to pretty much save it. If you look really, really close, you can see it. Yeah, I can see some areas, but I sanded it so that you hopefully couldn't see it too much. All right, using this sign that you can get from the Dollar Tree, I just picked this up in the fall. Um, I went ahead and I got this all painted white using these little box crates. Um, I ended up staining them with some wax that I think I got from Home Depot. And then to fill these little heart holes, I went ahead and I used some of that um, scrapbook paper, the little farmhouse scrapbook paper. A spider came out on my table and straight up ambushed me. That was terrifying. You guys, I have an irrational fear of spiders. So that was awful. 
I ended up killing it, but I saved you guys the gory details. So then I drilled some holes in the boxes and then I drilled some holes into the sign so that I could feed some jute twine through the holes and tie these boxes onto the sign right here because we're making a little kind of a three-tiered um, planter box sign. So I fed that through and I tied that onto the back so that they stayed nice and secure and in place. Put some floral foam down in there and then some greenery that I really did get from the Dollar Tree. And then the bottom of this I wanted to embellish it so here's some more of that scrapbook paper to tie it in. And so I glued this onto the bottom and then wrapped it with some jute twine a couple times and tied a bow for embellishment and this little wall planter hanging sign was done. Okay, this sign is so easy. So I basically just got this sticker from the Dollar Tree. I measured it out on this really skinny sign, which worked perfectly. I just cut down the length a little bit, painted it white, added some Mod Podge to help the sticker stick because it wasn't sticky enough on its own, glued this in place, Mod Podged over the top of it, and then to change it up a little bit from using a frame, I just went ahead and used some jute twine and glued this all the way around the edge of this to make a little twine frame and I ended up going around this twice and this sign was done you guys seriously so easy I mean if you blink you will miss it okay now this next week um, I moved on to the next round and this theme was thrift flips so I went to my thrift store and I picked up this recipe box and I sanded down all of the yellow paint and then I used my cutting machine to put some vinyl on here and I made a stencil and then using my Dremel with the carving tool I went ahead and I carved out the word recipes right into the wood of the lid. And then I went ahead and I gave this a good layer of chalk paint in the color plaster. And then using an Arteza paint marker, I filled in the word recipes so that that just popped right off the white. And then I distressed it with just some dry brushing technique. I was trying to say dry and brush at the same time. So I was bry dressing, brushing, I guess. Bry dressing. That's a new word for you guys. Bry dressing. And then I glued down some more of this scrapbook paper that I've been using in all of my videos tied some jute twine around the base and then I glued on this little heart that I saved from a Dollar Tree sign from another project and this little recipe box was fully remade and I love the transformation you guys and I love the traditional use of a recipe box all right so I found this guy at the thrift store and I thought that it would look so cute as a planter. So I took it home, I tore it apart, sanded it down really well to get that dark color off, and then I gave it a really good layer of white chalk paint on the edges when with those um, little wood slabs. And then later you'll see that I paint the base of this black with black chalk paint. So I tape it off so that I don't get it on there, and I paint this black to give it a very pretty contrast. And then some more um, bride dressing, as I said earlier. I went ahead and distressed it, and then I put some vinyl on each one of these with that little chicken vinyl decal at the top. And then I glued everything back together, basically the way that I took it apart, nailed it in to give it a cute little accent, put down some floral foam, and then this greenery is from Hobby Lobby, 50% off. Um, stuffed that in and then I made this cute little bow for the bottom where the hooks were and that's it you guys you have a cute little farmhouse planter there is that transformation you guys this is one of my favorite projects I found this thrifted it it said welcome to our home I took everything off sanded it really well and then I gave it a stain 
a coat of stain in the color Jacobian. And then more of my um, bry drushing technique. I went ahead and did that in the Waverly chalk paint of white. And then I put some vinyl on this little galvanized sign that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. Distressed the edges. And then I wanted this to pop just a little bit. So I glued down these tumbling tower blocks and then glued the metal onto these blocks and then embellished it with a little greenery swag that I made with this lamb's ear that I got from Walmart. A little bit of white, um, I think baby, nope, whatever these flowers are from the Dollar Tree, and then a little piece of cotton right in the middle. And then to fill in those little holes, I just put some of those bronze tacks in there. And you guys, this is one of my favorite signs. I absolutely love this transformation. And it says, welcome to our home, just like the original sign, but I just made it look way less 90s. All right, this little guy uh, was obviously in a baby's nursery, I think, once upon a time. So I took everything off, sanded it down, and then we're gonna give this a good coat of chalk paint. So the little lattice work is going to be black, outsides are going to be white and then I go through and bry brush on um, eat like the opposite color of each so I do it white on the black and black on the white to give it a really rustic farmhouse look and I love that you can use farmhouse as an excuse I've said this in one of my videos before but farmhouse is like meant to be rustic so if you mess up you can literally just be like oh it's fine I meant to do that because it's farmhouse you can just blame farmhouse for like all your mess ups but anyways, I added some floral that you can get from the Dollar Tree, and here you have this cute little farmhouse distressed rustic planter. All right, this giant clock I got, I was able to thrift, so I went ahead and I took off the Snyder family. I don't know who they are, but I hope everything worked out for you guys. Um, but I'm grateful for the clock, so I went ahead and I got it all sanded down, and we're gonna get this painted so that we can now make this a clock with my family, for my family. So using some chalk paint, we went ahead and we gave this a very good thick base coat, waited for that to dry. And then using a stencil, I went ahead and I stenciled this pattern onto here. And originally I did the entire clock and then I decided that I didn't want it to be over the entire clock. I decided that I wanted the middle part to be white again. So I just put a screw in the middle of this and then traced out a circle as you guys just saw me do there. And then using some chalk paint, I just went back over this. I also sanded it. You can see that I've kind of sanded it off just a little bit, but I went ahead and I put some chalk paint right there in the middle just so that I can kind of just break it up a little bit more. And then I cut out all of the numbers in vinyl and also my family's last name and the year that my husband and I got married. So this is the clock. I ordered some hands for it at the time. They hadn't come yet. They have since come and I just didn't update my clock photo. So I have put them in. I promise it looks like a real clock. Okay, using this sign that I got from the Dollar Tree, I went ahead and I took this apart, painted the back of this with some chalk paint let that dry, I painted the frame in the color elephant, let that dry, measured this out and gave this a shiplap look with my um, paint marker, wow. And then I went ahead and of course did some dry brushing. Are you guys say that? Oh, I said it right that time. Some dry brushing, right? Okay, and then I went ahead and gave this some dots around the edges and then this little white circle coaster, I put some vinyl on it to make a little lemon slice and glued this in. And here you have this cute little lemon accent sign. You can see I did an entire theme of lemons for my floating shelves. And I will show you how I make each one of these projects. Using this piece of wood, this is a scrap piece of wood, I just traced out some half circles using some plates to give me some sizes. And then using my jigsaw, I went ahead and I cut these out to make some little half lemon slices. And then right here, I freehand a lemon that I cut out. When I first started, it, it was really not looking well. It was looking like a UFO. And so I kind of 
worked with it a little bit, fixed it, and I think it eventually looks like a lemon. So you can see right there, I ended up cutting it out, but bear with me because there we go, it looks a little better. Um, I painted that little part green for the leaf and then just to give it a little bit of dimension, using my paint marker, I went ahead and just dotted this around the lemon just like that to give this a little lemon cutout. It is definitely not perfect, but it looks like a lemon, I think. And then I painted these other lemon slices white first, put down some yellow vinyl, and then distressed it a little bit. And here you can see that they are just some lemon slices and that full lemon right there at the bottom, just to add some accent pieces for some giant lemons and just like a really big pop of yellow to bring out the rest of the lemon decor on the shelf. So that little lemon that's like right there, you can see, I, you can't see me pointing, but that little lemon right there was my inspiration to do my own bigger lemon. This is a tree from my yard. I just went in my backyard and found this and I cut this down to discs and then I drilled a hole through each one of these discs. And then I glued paper down with some yellow vinyl to cut these out and I made little lemon slices. And then these, this giant bag of beads, you guys, I got from Joann's and they are awesome. I'm way happy with this bag of beads. Holy smokes, you guys, I'm just making up words. Bag of jeans. So I went ahead and I used a piece of wire to tape the jute twine to, and then I just fed on a bunch of beads in between the lemon slices to make this cute bead lemon garland. So we stained the beads in between and then did a heavy hand of dry brushing on them with white chalk paint. And then I made this little tassel with jute twine right here to be on the end of the garland. And then I just tied this on right here. This was the loop that I had left out when I had tied off the beads. So I just tied this on and one of my viewers told me how to straighten out the tassel just by using water and that worked so well. So here is the cute little garland that you can see just to give a little bit of a lemon slice accent. Okay, using my table saw, I cut down this piece of wood to make a frame. These are my frame pieces and then I used my chop saw to cut them down to size. This is a sign that I got from the Dollar Tree. I just painted it white and then using this tape, I just put two pieces together to get about an inch of spacing. You guys can just use regular one inch um, tape, like painter's tape, but I didn't have any, so I just improvised. But you can see that I ended up going back and redoing it and making much smaller stripes, which looks so much better. And then I painted the outer edges of the sign in gray, and then I dry brushed them. This is a scrap piece of wood that I had outside and I cut it into a five inch by five inch square, painted it white with Waverly white chalk paint, and then I put this vinyl right on it, um, right onto the square, and then of course secured it with some Mod Podge, glued this into the center of my sign, making sure that it was square, and then using this little piece of paper, I put on this little lemon vinyl sign and I tied a little bow and glued that on right here and made this adorable little lemon sign. It is one of my favorites, you guys. I love the stripes. All right, and now we're gonna make that squeeze the day sign that you can see right there. So this started out as a sign from the Dollar Tree. We went ahead and just broke off those edges, painted it white, and then painted these scrap pieces of wood that I just chopped down with my chop saw um, in the color mineral. And then I just put down some paint to start to make these stripes. And I purposely left them kind of rough because I didn't want them to be super solid. I wanted them to be distressed. And then just using some more tape, I just went ahead and I made some thinner stripes. And then I did this one more time so I had a total of five stripes. And then I sanded this off so that it was actually pretty faint. And then we glued on the edges of the frame. We of course do some dry brushing. 
and then this is just vinyl of course you can see it says squeeze the day and then we just put a lemon in vinyl on the side right there and this sign was done I love the stripe accent in the background oh and I have one more um, little lemon sign that we're gonna make so using this little sign that you can get from the Dollar Tree I measured out the center so that we could use a little bit more of this lemon scrapbook paper so we glued this down right here in the base and then I just used my printer to print out the words um, let's get zesty and I glued this right into the middle and then I just cut out this little border with vinyl using my Cricut, I cut that out. All of the vinyl in this video has been cut out using my Cricut. And then I just put that on there and apparently that little guy didn't make it onto the shelf, which I'm literally just now realizing. So I'm sorry there is no final reveal of that, la that little sign, let's get zesty. But here's the rest of the lemon shelf again. So that's cool. Okay, this is also a thrift flip. I picked this up for like a dollar and I loved that it was such a deep shadow box frame. So I went ahead and I stained the edges with some wax and then I painted the base of this white and then I measured this out. So I am again making some stripes in the way that I made that last sign that you just saw, but I needed the painter's tape to be um, skinnier so I just traced out a straight line using my ruler and then cut that out with a utility knife and then this is just in the color black or ink I should say and then um, I made this first stripe and then using the painters tape again I just made some skinnier stripes to go on either side of that thicker stripe and then I drilled a hole in the top and the side of this sign using the beads again I'm gonna make this little Garland, I guess you could call it. I actually saw this technique on the Crafting Cousins channel. They did a sign very similar to this, and I definitely want to give them a shout out because they are amazing and they inspire me all the time. So, using some wax, I went ahead and I got these beads stained so that they match the outer edge of the frame. And then I fed the jute twine through the hole in the top and the side of the sign, and then I tied off some holes and then to embellish it and cover that little part of the twine, I just put a bow on the top and the bottom so that you couldn't see that right there. And then I just used my Cricut to cut out the word together and I made a stencil so that I could continue with the painted look of the sign. And then I just painted this on with white right next to the stripes that I put on there and you can see that I sanded the stripes and the back of this to give it some distressed look and here is this sign all right I picked this up this was also a thrift project this was at Hobby Lobby for two dollars I took that little faith leather cross off and then I distressed this with some white chalk paint. It was already black, so that was awesome. I just left it black and I just went ahead in with a heavy hand and gave this some distressing. Using some of this scrap wood, I cut out a piece to fit, painted it white, and then used my Cricut to cut out this little farmhouse decal and I put this on and glued this into the middle of the sign and then I just put some greenery to embellish it with a jute twine bow and here you have this cute little farmhouse sign. For this project I'm using this scrap piece of wood, it was already cut just like this and so when I saw that groove cut into this wood I knew that this would be perfect for a little homemade letter board. So I'm using a sign that you can get from the Dollar Tree, cutting it down to size, just scoring it and snapping that off right there and then painting it white with chalk paint, letting that dry and then of course sanding it down just a little bit to make it nice and smooth and a little bit distressed. I went ahead and I got that painted. And then I also painted these white. I have two of them. I ended up using my chop saw to cut them in half so that I could have one on top of the other. But I went ahead and I got that all painted and let that dry.
And then for the frame, I went ahead and I got these little thin pieces of wood stained in the color Jacobian so that they could um, contrast with the white. And I went ahead and I glued these in place. And then I just used these little clamps that you can get from the Dollar Tree to hold this in place while it dried and they worked wonders. You can see that I also distressed the white part of that frame. I just dabbed on some of the black chalk paint and then kind of sanded over it to fade it just a little bit. And then I used my chop saw to cut out these little, they're like one and a half inch by one inch um, pieces of wood. So these are gonna be like little chips, like my little letter pieces. And so I went ahead and I got each one of those stained. And then I used my Cricut, my Cricut, wow. I used my Cricut to cut out these vinyl letters. And I like to do it a little message in each one of my videos at the very end of my videos. And so if you guys didn't get a chance to see the part where I did an end segment about being a value, you guys will definitely wanna check that out. It was a super awesome message that I shared from Darren Hardy. So um, I actually cut out that word and made that into the sign. So you're gonna see here that it says be a value and it'll make a lot of sense if you go and watch my video and watch that end segment. But here you can see we're giving it a good layer of distressing and then my battery or my, my battery died or my camera ran out, but I put some jute twine on the front of those to embellish them. And here's my little letter sign. Okay, this is a trash to treasure. This was just a bottle of um, apple juice. And so I washed that out, let it dry really well. And then I am giving this a layer or three of Rust-Oleum spray chalk paint. And then I let that dry really, really well. And I did end up giving this a couple layers because I wanted it to just be a really bright white. So you can see it covered really well. And then I just used a sponge with some black chalk paint in the color ink. And then I just went around the edges and distressed this to give this kind of a chipped enamel look. And then when I was all done with it, I did seal it so that it was kind of shiny smooth again and stayed in place. And that was it. This just was a cute, quick little farmhouse looking vase that I absolutely love, especially with some greenery. It looks pretty with the lamb's ear. It would look really pretty with boxwood greenery, pretty much anything green. It would look really pretty, even some cotton. You could put some cotton um, sprigs in it and I think it looks so good. I love the shape of that bottle. Okay, here's some beads. These are actually from Amazon. I got beads from Amazon and from Joanne. So these ones from Amazon. So I'm gonna get these all stained right here with some wax. So they're all stained and ready to go with almost like a texturing look to them. And then I'm making a tassel to put on the end of this. So this is gonna be a uh, spring garland that you can use on like a tear tray. All right, so once I get the tassel all made, then I went ahead and I just strung the beads on. These beads are all the same size and I don't know how many there are. I wanna say there's over 30, but I just strung these on to a piece of jute twine. And then I am going to tie a loop in the one end of the garland and then I'm gonna tie this tassel on to the other end. And then, oh, you guys didn't see me do this. I'm sorry. I um, glued on a piece of that scrapbook paper to this piece of wood right here, kind of like what you saw me do with that little spring sign. And then I distressed the paper a little bit with um, some, just sanding it, just by sanding it. But I did a spring sign on both sides. So either side it flips over to, you're gonna see a cute little spring sign. So enjoy the little things with some floral. And then this is a cute little spring sign with a watering can. Happy spring, it's got a hole in it. And then I of course mod podged each side to seal the paper in place. And then I'm gonna feed that little loop right here. I'm gonna feed that through, and well of the jute twine, make a loop, feed it through, and then feed it through this loop so that 
the way that I did this so that I could change out this little um, wooden sign year round so that if I don't want to use spring I can change it up and I can put like summer and then fall and I can change it out on my beaded garland so here it is on a tiered tray All right, so for this next sign, or this next thing, I'm gonna show you guys how I use my Cricut. So I went into the projects and I searched paper flowers. And when you go through these, it will bring up, if you click on each one, it will tell you the level of how hard or difficult the project is. So right here you can see that this is, um, I believe it's intermediate. And then it tells you what you need. It's, it's literally step-by-step instructions it is amazing and then if you click down there on make it it brings everything up for you in your project section I actually didn't end up picking these exact type of flowers I was going to make these but I picked a different one once you click make it it brings you right here and then it shows you that you need six different pieces of paper to cut all of these out and then it will show you like what it's going to cut out in each section it's step-by-step -step instructions it is so easy once you do that then you go over into the right hand corner and you click make it and then this will take it over in each mat and it will cut out each one of these and it gives you a chance to change out your color make sure that you switch it from vinyl to cardstock because you're going to be cutting it out in paper of course and so I am using this cardstock with um, this bright spring green and I'm going to be using this little spring wreath right here to put some paper flowers on so once I had everything cut out you can see that I'm just using my tweezers right here to start in the very middle pinch the paper and then just begin to roll the paper around your tweezers and keep going until that full spiral of paper is completely wrapped around the tweezers. At the very end, there's a little circle part for you that you can use to glue it in place. And then to make the flower actually look more like a flower, you release what you just rolled up and then just kind of play with it a little bit as it loosens. And then it will pop back out a little bit and form a beautiful flower. Using some hot glue, I just glued this little tab down in place and that is what held my flower together. And then using these, I went ahead and I just folded them where um, the petals were so that it gave it some dimension. And then you just keep going with your sizes and it'll have you cut it out in two different colors so that you can get the contrast of each. I glued this down with hot glue and then I just used my fingers to kind of spruce this up a little bit. And then you can see that I wrapped up all of those other flowers. And then I cut out some green leaves I went ahead and I folded them to make them look a little bit more three-dimensional, 3D. And then I just took each one of these flowers. Look how pretty that is, you guys. It's incredible that, that is made with paper. And then I just went ahead and I glued this around on my wreath the way that I wanted to assemble it in place. This was a little tricky because I didn't wrap the wire wreath. And so I had to put each one in place and then really glue it down so that it stayed, but it ended up working. I uh, put I put down the leaves first and then I just went around in a circle and I glued on all of the paper flowers that I had cut out and rolled up. You guys, it's amazing what crickets can do. Like this particular video isn't sponsored by Cricut, but I can genuinely tell you that I love my Cricut and I love all the things that I can make with my Cricut. I just feel like the possibilities are endless. And then putting this flower right here in the middle of this other flower, I don't know if they necessarily go together, but hey, we get to do what we want, right? There it is. There is our paper wreath. 
who knew that you could make a beautiful spring wreath out of paper? All right, guys, very last project. We made it. This is a piece of wood that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. I painted it white, let it dry, dry brushed the edges, and then using my Cricut, I cut out this little decal that I actually kind of threw together and made myself. Um, I don't have a file for you linked down below because I don't know how to do that, but one day I will learn how to do that and I will leave those for you. So I went ahead and I just cut out the words, this is my, in a different font with some arrows, and then happy place. And then I put that on there. And then I went ahead and just used my ruler with this paint marker. And I went around the edges twice actually to give this a little framed dimension. At the top, I just went ahead and freehanded this because of course there was no way that I was gonna be able to use my ruler to do this, but and this was it. I framed it out twice and this went up on my shelf with all my lemon stuff and I think this turned out so good. You guys, thank you so much for watching. I'm so grateful for you guys being here and seeing all of my spring farmhouse projects that I have made so far. If you guys like this video, please give this video a thumbs up. If you would like to if you would like to consider sticking around, I would love for you guys to subscribe so that you can see more DIYs just like this. And I hope you will leave me a comment down below and I hope you guys all have an amazing day. Thank you so much for stopping by and I will see you guys next time. Bye guys.